Hey there, welcome to a brand new episode of Music Express. My name is Twan and this week's vlog is going to be a very special one because in this week's episode you will see my 100th interview for Music Express. So obviously I was looking for a very special guest and I found one. His name is Ralf Barens aka Ralphie B. He hardly does any interviews so I'm super happy about this one. I spoke with Ralf about his classic Massive which came out in the year 2001 under his alias Ralphie B. So that's exactly 20 years ago, so a good reason to ask him about the story behind this one. But before we start with the interview, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and very important, also make sure to click the bell button because then you will get a notification the next time a new vlog is online. And another important thing, if you like my vlogs and my interviews and you want to support me and donate a little bit, then you can do that via PayPal or check out my Patreon page where I will give away signed CDs every month. More info can be found in the links, uh, which you can find in the video description. All right, enough talking. Here it is, my 100th interview for Music Express, the story behind Massive by Rolf Barendsen, AKA Ralphie B. Enjoy. Ralphie B is an alias of Dutch DJ and producer Rolf Barendsen. He was born on April 6, 1977 in Zwijndrecht, a town based near the city of Rotterdam. In the year 1999, Rolf released his first record on Dutch label Deal Records. During the years, Rolf released tracks under names such as Alpha Breed, Midway, First Date and of course Ralphie B. Under that name he made a track called Massive, which became a big trans classic. I recently sat down with Ralf in his studio to ask him about the story behind Massive. My first question to him was if he could still remember what kind of music he did listen to when he grew up. Uh, yeah, uh, I listen a lot to uh, actually to my dad's music. Uh, it's like Supertramp, Bruce Springsteen, Toto, all kinds of uh, 80s stuff actually. Uh, I grew up in the 80s. Uh, and at the end of the 80s, uh, early 90s, I developed my own taste. So I started to, uh, to listen to, uh, to dance music. Um, I think the first contact I had with dance music was the Turn Up The Bass compilations. I don't know if you, if you know it, but that was, yeah, I, I just bought it. Uh, when, the, when there was a new version out, I just went to the store and get, get the next one. So it started with Turn Up The Bass 1 and went on to Turn Up The Bass 18. And I was always listening to that kind of stuff. Yeah, that was the end of the 80s, early 90s. Yeah, I think early 90s, they, they came out, those yeah. compilations. So, um, when did you start with making music yourself? Um, well, I first started uh, having... Uh, actually, I started to make music on uh, an organ. The organ of my mother. She had an uh, old electronic organ. and. I was started actually as a young boy playing with the organ, playing around with it. There was a little section on it as well, like a synthesizer section. I was interested in that, but I didn't really know what it was. There was an elephone, there was a cutoff. And um, actually uh, after the organ, I wanted to have my own keyboard. So I started with keyboards, the Yamaha PSR keyboards. And every uh, other year I just bought a new keyboard. So that's how I grew up with my, uh, with my music. Yeah. But the thing is, I never wanted to do lessons, you know. I didn't want to go to piano lessons or whatever. I just want to play around with my keyboards. And I tried to make music as well uh, on these keyboards, like dance music, but it's quite difficult with these uh, old uh, style uh, keyboards. Yeah, so you never got any musical training? No, no, I have no any musical training. Okay. Uh, I just do everything by my uh, yeah. ear. Okay, good. So do you still recall your very first ever release? Um, yeah, my, my release is standing here, it's Beyond the Moon, Alpha Breed. I did it in 98, I think, uh, 99, yeah, 99. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was my first record. I, I, I actually, uh, uh, I started to, to make, uh, I started to buy synthesizers and uh, after I bought uh, the synthesizer here, I, uh, I made this track. Uh, I, uh, I knew a guy, uh, uh, my, my friend Jack Molenschot, uh, he's mesh and uh, we both uh, were making music a lot and uh, we delivered our demos uh, at a store in uh, Dordrecht. There was a guy in the store, his name is Giant Edo, 
was famous for, uh, for producing uh, Human Resource uh, Dominator. Actually, he was involved in that. And we gave the demos to him and uh, he said, okay, did we, uh, I can sign this, I, I want to sign this, I can actually uh, uh, release this on, uh, on records. So Beyond the Moon came out on Deal Records. Deal Records is, uh, you know, this was quite a good label because mm -hmm. Veracocha Cards Blanche is on, was on Deal Records. So, um, yeah, what can I recall from it? Uh, it was my first record and DJ Jean put it on his uh, Matt House CD, oh, yeah. I remember. But actually it was not, it was the B-side. But uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was great back then to have your first own record. Yeah. That was a, a good start. Yeah, I remember I went, I bought the record myself because somehow this label didn't deliver the record. So I had to bought my own, buy, this, this record here is bought by myself oh. in, the, in the store. Oh wow. Yeah. So uh, for this interview, we're gonna talk about your track Massive, which came out uh, exactly 20 years ago, back in the year 2001. Yeah. Uh, first things first, was there anything that did inspire you when you started to work on the track? Um, well, uh, I, yeah. I think uh, I listen a lot to uh, Paul Oakenfold, his sets uh, in, in early 2000. And yeah, in the, in the UK they used a lot of more progressive sounds. Uh, so like acids and uh, different kind of beats. So that, that kind of inspired me and I bought this virus, you know. The, the new uh, synthesizer virus B came out. I really wanted it. I actually wanted it around Christmas. I was really, I, th I thought I'm gonna buy this virus. So, but at, around Christmas, this store was closed. So I was waiting and waiting and finally I got it in January. I could get there and grab, uh, grab the virus. And um, yeah, the sounds uh, inspired me instantly. I, 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 in January, I just made Massive in a very short time. I remember I also wanted to do something like super string. Like I wanted these big chords uh, like that combined with that UK sound. Uh, before that, I always made uh, in the alpha beat breed alias, they were more, uh, yeah, more sweet, more uh, cheesy actually mm -hmm. uh, sounds. So that was the difference. And when it was finished, I, uh, I called it actually alpha breed massiva. So not massive, massiva. Okay. That was the track, alpha breed massiva. I thought massive is a bit standard, so let's change that a bit. I gave it to uh, to the studio and um, they mastered it and uh, they sent it to Black Hole. Uh, but they sent it as Ralph B massive. They, they thought this is different. Uh, must be a typo. Uh, we'll we'll send it to the label. Ralph B massive. So what, what did, did Black Hole uh, were they like enthusiastic like straight away? No 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 no. That's that's the good story about it. Um, I got a call from uh, from Black Hole uh, from the A&R back then, and uh, he called me at my. I lived with my parents. I still remember. He called me at my parents' house, like, "Oh, Black Hole is calling on the on the home line," and uh, I was enthusiastic. But they had a disappointing message because they said, uh, "Yeah, we're not going to sign it. Sorry, because yeah, it doesn't really lift off. Uh, it doesn't peak. So you need to work on that. You need to work in your tracks on uh, on the peaks." So yeah, I didn't. I didn't want to change the track. Uh, I didn't feel like once you have the track done, it's done, you know. So we just went on, went on and we started looking for other labels. Uh, we tried uh, Warner, we tried, uh, uh, I think, Deal Records as well. But uh, we didn't get a fast response. And meanwhile, uh, Peter van Bodegraven, he, is a, he was my publisher. He's a publisher for many, uh, many people back then. And he was also do, doing business with uh, Chesto. So he said, I'll take this track and I'll give it to Tiesto, to Thijs. You, you'll probably like it. And yes, uh, that's, that's how it came. Uh, Tiesto liked it a lot. He, uh, he put it on a white label and he started playing it. And uh, yeah, I remember on my birthday, uh, 6 April, I got the call from Black Hole. We want to sign it. <laughs> we want to sign it. So yeah, that's how, uh, how Massive got signed and yeah. So, but that, that was the actual version, so you didn't change anything about it, I right? didn't change, it was the exact same version yeah. that, that got signed. Uh, I think, yeah, sometimes it's just uh, opinion. So yeah, Chester was playing it. Uh, do you remember hearing the track live yourself for the first time at a gig? Um, 
I don't think uh, back then I went, didn't go to a lot of festivals and uh, gigs, but uh, I, I used to hear it on, online. I just downloaded the sets and mm -hmm. was amazed to hear it. I remember like on 2002 it was played in uh, in uh, the, the, the King and the Queen's Marriage oh, and yeah, I think yeah. Chester played it then. Uh, it's like D Dutch Dimension? Yeah, Dutch Dimension. Yeah. It got played. In the, yeah. Uh, I, 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 don't, I have I've heard, I've heard it after, but not uh, not around then. Uh, mm -hmm. I was just uh, at home and yeah. uh, not doing a lot of uh, yeah. festivals. So uh, yeah, besides uh, Tiesto, uh, which other DJs were playing the track? Well, Armin uh, picked it up. It wasn't as big as, th as then, but uh, Armin van Buren played it in his uh, first radio show. And of course, Paul van Dijk, uh, he put it on his CD. He actually made his own version on, uh, on Massive, and uh, you, you don't see it, but it is the Paul van Dijk edit mm -hmm. that, that is on the, on the CD's Politics of Dancing. Yeah. And he gave it a real boost, you know, uh, because he was he was huge, uh, he's still huge, but that, that CD was huge. So he started to play it, and yeah, when those guys played it, then everybody start, started playing it. And then later Paul van Dijk also signed it to his label uh, Vendit. Yeah, he signed it to Vendit, yeah, and uh, we actually tried to to get the the, the Paul van Dijk edit uh, to to release it after ten years, but Paul said no, uh, it's not good enough for me. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, but the yeah the the Vendit uh, is standing here as well. The it was yeah it was great to be on that label. Yeah, they signed it and they uh, they released it with new remixes from Mirko de Govia and Filterheads. Yeah. Um, also in the UK, Massive was a big success. Ministry of Sound released a track on their sub-label Data Records with a remix by D. Ramirez. So did you expect uh, that Massive would be become, become such a big track? No, uh, I never expected it, of, of course. Uh, I was very happy uh, back, back at the time. I think at the time I didn't realize how big it actually was. You know, it came later. Uh, the, the, then you get the feedback from, uh, from everyone and you see where, where it was played. So uh, yeah, Data Records, yeah, I just heard, okay, it's also on Data Records, okay. Ministry of Sound, <laughs> nice. DJ Sami was on there as well, uh, you know, with the, with, with the song, so. Yeah. So yeah, because these days, yeah, Massive is considered like as one of the biggest trans classics. These days it is, but uh, I told you before, like back then, it was just one of the tracks that mm -hmm. was new. And I actually, yeah, like, like everything, uh, time goes by and uh, then it starts to, to, to become like a, a cl real classic. Yeah. So uh, people still, say, uh, still keep reminding it gets played on classic CDs and uh, yeah. is a, every time you see it coming back. Yeah, and like uh, recently it was in the State of Trends uh, top, top 1000. Yeah, yeah, it's great to see that yeah. again. Uh, it was quite high as well, so yeah. Yeah. Good, good for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's always nice to see uh, people still love it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, from all the remixes that, that have been released over the years, do you have a personal favorite one? Um, uh, from Massive, I think uh, I think the filter ads. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that was also one of the first I heard. Uh, Ronsky Speed won't be happy. <laughs> he did the Mirko de Govia remix, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, filter ads is is kind of a different style. I mm -hmm. think recently it was played by. Uh, uh, by Paul van Dijk in one of his sets again. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh cool. Yeah. Oh cool. So yeah, it is uh, 20 years ago now since uh, the release of Massive. Uh, are there any plans for the 20th anniversary? No plans really. Not, y not no, yet? No, no, not yet. Uh, I think a, a lot of remixes have, have been done already, so I don't really want to uh, to make yeah. a remix again. Yeah. But did, did you ever try to make a new remix yourself? I think you I did, did right? I did, yeah. In, uh, after the 10 years, mm -hmm. I, I made a Midway remix. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's out, but uh, yeah, yeah. did. What is your personal highlight when it comes to 20 years of Massive? Um, that's very difficult, very difficult. Um, I think the, the highlight for me is, is just back then to get the track signed, you know, that, that, that made me so happy uh, that, that finally and that like the big DJs were playing it, it's your, it's your breakthrough, right? Yeah. So uh, that, that is the highlight of the, of the track. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, afterwards you see it in, in big sets, uh, like recently in the, in the top, uh, top thousand and, and uh, the State of Trends uh, top thousand celebration, if it's played. And I see, uh, uh, yeah, you, you see it being played. Uh, 
yeah it, it always makes me feel good yeah. again about the track and yeah, you see all the reactions now like on social media yeah yeah, yeah. and uh, some people just discover it because yeah it's already 20 years old mm -hmm. so uh, some people just discover the yeah. track and uh, so uh, massive came out via the intrinsic trust label and uh, you just released a new ralph b single there called the terra prime uh, what can you tell about this one um yeah, Terra Prime is uh, is quite new. Uh, I went back to the to the old trends that I was making. I tried a bit of progressive uh, past few years, but now I thought oh, I'm, I'm going to try this uh, very fast, uh, uplifting style for once. And that's how the track came came together. Uh, it sounds a bit like a midway, but I thought no, midway needs to be more mid, even more yeah. midway than <laughs> this. But the, the melody is like midway uh, mm -hmm. kind of sound. It's, uh, it's out now uh, on In Trans We Trust. Uh, I got the follow-up also coming already. Oh. Uh, it's, uh, it's probably it's Mar uh, May. Yeah, May. In May, uh, it's called Sci-Fi. It has all these Sci-Fi influences. And uh, in between, I have another track. It's uh, called Cayende. Uh, it's actually... Uh, it's actually the name is, uh, is my, um, my wife and two daughters. Oh. And um, yeah, it comes out at the, the label of uh, Onno van Kevenade, it's a uh, Serendipity yeah. Records. And that will also be a Ralphie B track? Yeah, all three will be a Ralphie, tree, uh, Ralphie B track. Yeah, Ralphie Tree. <laughs> yeah, all three. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's going to be a busy year for you. Yeah, I got, I got a good remix coming as well, a vocal remix. Uh, I've just, uh, yesterday I've just uh, got the confirmation that the, the original producer, it's, a, it's not a dance track originally, mm -hmm. he, uh, he gave permission. So uh, yeah, we need, still need to think, work things out, but yeah. uh, I'm sure it's going to be fine. Ah, exciting. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what else can we expect from you in the near future? Uh, well, I will... I will try not to have all the time a comeback again. So I want to keep on releasing tracks uh, more regu regularly. Yeah, yeah, because sometimes there's like a, a release and there's two years of nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a bit. Uh, that's a bit why I do. Uh, that's also the reason why I'm not a full-time uh, producer. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, yeah. You, you know, I don't always have the, the inspiration to make new tracks. And sometimes I just want uh, want to do something else for uh, for a month or two. Yeah. But uh, yeah, if I want to keep on releasing, well, then yeah. I have to be in the studio a bit more. Yeah, but you said like a, at least three tracks coming up, so I guess you get yeah, a lot yeah, of inspiration. The, the lockdown uh, is helping yeah. uh, with that, of course. But, uh, you're sitting at home, so. Uh, yeah, yeah, true. Um, out of all your own productions, do you have a favorite one? Uh, my favorite melody is, uh, is the one from Icarus. Mm -hmm. I'm really proud of that melody because it, it never bores me. I, 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 I'm very proud that I, somehow I wrote this. Uh, I think the track could get a remix at uh, some, some point. Uh, I also have a chill out version, but yeah, if I hear this track, I'm always happy. I'm always proud that I, uh, that I wrote that melody. Yeah, um, yeah there's, uh, that's, that's, that's the one. That's the one, yeah, okay. I think. And the last question, pineapple on pizza, yes or no? Pineapple on pizza. Um, for me, no. <laughs> no. Okay. Well, thank you very much for your time and good luck with everything. Okay. Thank you very much, Tuan. All right. That was it. This week's vlog, my interview with Rolf Barens, aka Ralphie B, and the story behind Massive. Rolf, thank you very much for your time. Much appreciated. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the vlog. If you did, make sure to give this video a like, leave a comment in the comment section below, and very important, make sure to subscribe. Also make sure to click the bell button because then you will get a notification the next time a new vlog is online. And I did another interview with Rolf and in that one he's telling the story behind the midway classic Monkey Forest. That interview will be online in a couple of weeks from now so stay tuned. Once again thanks for watching and until next time bye bye.